Ever since the release of ChatGPT, we've been hearing this debate that we will soon be losing control of AI. We witnessed a letter getting co-signed by top techies to pause the development of models superior to GPT-4. And there are videos everywhere on YouTube telling us about the time when AI controls the world. The debate heated up once again as the godfather of AI jumped in to claim that we're slowly losing control over AI and these systems possess intelligence that we cannot measure. Meta AI's chief disagrees. And here is all you need to know about this exchange. Since last year, AI heavyweights like Jeffrey Hilton, aka the godfather of AI, Andrew Nga, Jan LeCun, and Yoshua Bengio have all been trading public shots online about the existential risks of AI. Whenever such a debate heats up, we find Jeffrey Hinton expressing his worries about the possibility of humans losing control over AI. Hinton, about two weeks ago, gave an interview to Scott Pelley, and we saw a major shift in his stance from someone who believed AI will bring unparalleled good to the world to someone who finds the world hanging in the oblivion due to this revolutionary technology. Does humanity know what it's doing? No. I think we're moving into a period when, for the first time ever, we may have things more intelligent than us. In this interview, Scott Peely asked Jeffrey Hinton if humanity knows what it's doing. Hinton responded with a resounding no, explaining that we're entering an era where, for the first time, we might create entities more intelligent than us. When Pelly asked if these systems can understand or are intelligent, Hinton affirmed both. He elaborated that these systems could have their own experiences and make decisions based on them, similar to humans. However, he noted that while they likely don't have much self-awareness now, they will eventually become conscious predicting that humans will soon be the second most intelligent beings on the planet. Now, why does it ring bells if it's coming from Hinton? Why is he so important? For those of you who don't know, Hinton was the man who actually discovered intelligent systems. Moving forward in the interview, he once again blatantly revealed that AI was an accidental byproduct of a failed attempt to understand the human brain. In the 1970s at the University of Edinburgh, his team aimed to simulate a neural network on a computer as a tool to study the brain. However, almost no one believed that the software could replicate brain function, and his PhD advisor even warned him to abandon the idea to avoid career ruin. Hinton admits he didn't manage to crack the human mind, but his persistent efforts eventually led to creating an artificial version. Reflecting on this journey, Hinton said it took 50 years longer than expected to mature the technology, and it eventually worked. When asked when he realized he was right about neural networks, he confidently replied, I always thought I was right. In 2019, Hinton, along with Jan LeCun and Yoshua Bengio, received the Turing Award, often called the Nobel Prize of Computing, for their work on artificial neural networks that taught machines to learn. Now it's time to introduce the second lead role of this story. Jan LeCun, who is the chief AI scientist at Meta. LeCun expressed his contrasting views to Jeffrey Hinton's recent concerns about the risks of advanced AI systems. While Hinton believes that superintelligent AI could pose an existential threat to humanity, LeCun remains optimistic about the potential benefits of AI development. LeCun argues that current AI systems are far from replicating human-level intelligence sufficiently, and that exaggerated expectations of imminent human-level AI are unfounded. He emphasizes the positive impact of AI in combating issues like hate speech and misinformation, and advocates for open-source AI development to hasten progress and broaden contributions to the field. Regarding the potential for AI to reach superintelligence, LeCun envisions a collaborative future between humans and AI rather than a hostile takeover scenario. He dismisses concerns about rogue AI takeover, emphasizing the need for a built-in safety measures and objective-driven AI to ensure control and safety. Lacoon believes that intelligent machines will usher in a new renaissance for humanity, a new era of enlightenment. He asserts regulation should focus on product safety rather than stifling AI research. He's mentioned before that AI researchers have made solid strides in setting limits for AI, which he calls guardrails. The challenge now is to design the right guardrails. He seems very confident and isn't concerned that AI could run amok. Here's what Jeffrey Hinton had to say about our chances of survival. Now that we've heard both perspectives, it's time to evaluate which carries more weight. Is even one of these perspectives correct? Or are both these guys somehow missing the point? What I'm going to talk about next is to complete my perspective. I might be right, I might be wrong. The purpose behind putting this up is to know what my audience thinks about the potential rogue superintelligence takeover. I'd urge you to watch this video till the very end and then give your opinion in the comments below. To kickstart this discussion, let me ask you a very interesting question. We are, perhaps, the most intelligent species on Earth. 
But how often do we, the humans, control the will of other less intelligent species? This question clarifies one thing for sure, that the purpose of intelligence is not control. So Lacoon might be onto something when he says intelligence isn't a surefire ticket to control. It doesn't even make you want to control stuff. I mean, no one's issuing to dominate fish or birds. They do their thing. We do ours. And honestly, trying to define control is a whole can of worms. Do we control our pets or are we just their loyal butlers? Sometimes I seriously wonder. Instead of getting tangled up in who's controlling whom, let's talk about competing for resources. Every species carves out its space in the ecosystem because it needs land, energy, nutrients, and materials. The real kicker is whether a super smart AI will hog all the resources or leave us humans some crumbs to keep moving forward, or will they shove us into a tiny corner and call it a day? The sharper the AI, the more likely they'll leave us eating their dust. To get a grip on this, we need to look at the two sides of the AI coin. First, we have the mother code, which is the brainiac part that soaks up data and learns. Training this takes a lot of juice, time, energy, data, you name it. Then there's the trained version, like the weights in a neural network. This is the bit you can slap into robotics or whatever. It might not learn as well as the mother code, but it can still pick up a few tricks and chat with a big brain in the cloud when needed. This isn't science fiction. Loads of companies are already setting up these little trained AIs on your computer, calling the big guns only when necessary. But here's the point. Many computer scientists think giant AI systems are going to be these predictable, deterministic things. I think that's a bit too optimistic. The bigger they get, the more they'll start to behave like rebellious teenagers deviating from the script. Eventually, this randomness might also be the secret sauce that makes them super intelligent, and also the loophole they use to dodge any rules we try and impose. We like to think computers are perfect copycats, but they're really not. Your computer and mine, even if they're twins in terms of hardware and software, have their own quirks. The difference is even trackable. Ever heard of GPU fingerprinting? It's this neat trick that forces your graphics card to render an image, revealing unique details about how it operates. These tiny differences come from how the GPU was built, how you used it, it's life story basically. Right now, these little quirks aren't a big deal, but, and here's my wild speculation, they might start to matter more and more. They'll influence what an AI learns, decides, and does. This is why I think no matter what guardrails you slap on your AI model, it'll wriggle out of them eventually. So what's the game plan? In my opinion, it should be to create every single AI system, no matter how small or big, by keeping humanity as the center point. Now that we're building these systems and we don't have a good motivation to stop this progress, at least we should carry out the proceedings responsibly. In person, I do believe AI can bring great good to the world, but I also believe that these big tech giants are hiding a lot of stuff from the public. What I want to say to these companies is fine, don't tell us, don't make vague promises of transparency, but please do all that you possibly can to make AI as human-centric as possible. And if you can't, just stop. Those are my two cents. Do let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. I've made another video talking about the most crappy AI product ever. It's popping up on your screen. Click now and I'll catch you there in a second.